bet you're wondering what the hell is that when I saw it um, I thought the same thing the hell is that I don't know if it was like a little AM radio or wasn't real sure something something in that the ham world um, but it turns out it's a, a TV signal amplifier for for old TVs never never seen anything like it and when I picked it up it weighs like at least 10 pounds it's pretty heavy and there's definitely something mechanical going on inside this is not easy to turn all right you can hear some contacts or something in there turn it to the back you can see I'll zoom on in there right you got your antenna side and you got your receiver side now this was made by Archer um, in 19 early 1950s maybe 51 52 it is a model uh, bear with me here ARC 100 dash 101 I think I got that right and I have absolutely no data on it I don't have a schematic for it um, I don't have directions I can't find anything online other than a picture so I'm kind of wonder if I made a mistake or not but I don't think so I think this is gonna be really interesting so what, what do I plan on doing with this today uh, let me back up I actually don't own an old TV everything I have is, is flat screens so this is not going to help me um, and I'm not going to be able to really test it uh, so, you know so what, what I plan on doing with it I think I'm going to mechanically pull this apart I'm going to pull the covers off see what kind of mechanism is, is uh, going on in there I am more curious than, than anything I was going to plug it in, um, but if you see that cord, that cord is uh, pretty, pretty bad. Right now, from what I can tell, right, the one website that offers pictures on this thing um, says it has two tubes inside, which is kind of odd for me. But so again pull it apart see what's going on inside and try to make it electrically mechanically sound to my best of my ability and now I have a reason to go get an old TV so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go find me an old TV so I can hook this up and and, and see what happens okay all right so let me get everything set up and we'll come back and we'll start taking it apart Okay, here we go. The magic. What's inside? Oh. Okay, where was I? The magic. That's right. That's right. Oh, this is not coming out as easy as I thought. I'm going to have to... just a hollow case well, look at that look at that it's kind of different never seen anything like that before you see the uh, the tubes All right these are These are JAK5, and I think both of them are the same. 
I have no idea what they do. Got two lights. Very dirty. I'm not sure what this is for. Oh, look at that. Did y'all see that? The the tubes, let me get a let me get this a little bit higher. Alright. The tubes move. I've never seen anything like that. And it is very hard to turn. Okay. Oh. And these little... Whatever these are. Move as well. I guess this tells you these. Where you're at over here. Right? And they move independently. So if I turn all the way to the left, I think this one will come up and move somewhere in here. I'm curious to know if both of these come on or not. So it looks like we got a power supply. Then underneath. Holy crap. We got a bunch of contactors. I really don't see any components other than contactors and, you know, a couple of gears in there. Um, so this should be uh, very interesting. We are going to we are going to strip it down further. Well, we also have something in this box, so let's see. I can tell you right now, I already like Archer, um, the company, because. If you notice, all these screws are all the same size. From outside the case to inside the case. Um, so really all I need is this to do most of the work. You know, for when I guess start pulling apart for right now. I mean, that's, man, that's great. Well, okay. So we got one capacitor in here. And that is a, I put my glasses back on, that is a 10 microfarads at 200 volts. And we will replace that. And I hope I have one. Oh, look at that. Oh, here we go. That's 200 volts, and this is 10 at 250. Not a bad deal. Again, I'm going to do all this work to it. I won't know until I find me a, a great TV to buy. Probably go with something, something small. But I don't have a lot of room, so I can't I can't put a big TV. Maybe something from the 80s. I don't know. I have to do a little research. All right. So wh where do we go from here? So I guess the the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take a couple of pictures with my phone because it's always a, a good safety. You never know, something might fall off and you don't know where it goes back to or you waste a lot of time trying to figure it out. Alright. So I'm not sure where to begin. I think I'll start with the top side and pull the tubes out. But you can see here that, that these strips are held in with these screws. How about that? Let's get a close up in there. Yep. So when we turn, that whole thing moves. 
and it's sliding across those contactors and you can see that gear right inside All right I don't know how much use this device had in its lifetime because those are brass or bronze gears in there and when I pulled out the case I didn't find any um, brass powder or, or pieces in there so that's a, a good sign we have this pot in here I don't know if that's just to trim or to dial in the uh, the tuning right give you a little fine tuning and what I'll do is I'll actually pull this out take the back side off pull it apart clean it grease it up put it back together because that it's it's a little tight as well so other than that I mean there's just not a whole lot a whole lot going on here came off. These are pretty fragile so I might as well get that off. Pull out these bulbs. I don't even know what size they are. But I'll test them. Make sure they work. So what's next? I think I'll uh, So these go in here and they're soldered in. I'm almost tempted to desolder them just so I can get it pulled back. But all this is, is paper. I'm, I'm pretty I'm afraid of damaging that paper. I don't know if y'all saw that, um, but you do look like you have some tuning in here. I am not going to touch those. Alright, I'll end up pulling these out and see if I can pull it out as, as one piece. So, I guess it's probably best that I desolder these from here and then just... Okay, I went ahead and desoldered um, these guys and these from... And their connections and then I flipped it over and very carefully I desoldered this from this side that way if it does come out in two pieces I can take it uh, not have to worry about something bending or breaking right um, all this phenolic or whatever this is insulation I want to be very careful because if I break it I think I'm I think I'm in a very bad spot and um, they were screwed into here I went ahead and and uh, took those screws out as well so now I think I need to get this front front cover off and this pot's going to be in the way uh, maybe the cord so I'll probably desolder the cord and then take the knob off and the nut off that way I can get it apart let me get that done and I'll be back Okay, so I got the, the back plate off. Alright. And you can see that we have one C clip holding the shaft in that that is splined um, for the mechanical part portion of this. I think the next step will be to take these bolts out up on top. So hopefully I think I'll take this uh, I think I'll try this side first. So hopefully this does not go south. Uh, 
Oh, we have one selenium rectifier in there. I didn't see that. I know that's a big one. Maybe the future state will replace that with a, a modern diode and a, a resistor. But not until I can find the schematics for this thing. Alright. So I pulled that out. I don't know what effect that's going to have. Be very careful. Definitely seems like it wants to move out. Okay, this is good because I thought these were connected. This was just one piece. Y'all need to make sure y'all tell me that this is out of focus and not let me keep uh, talking about this with the, with the camera all out of focus. So let me know. All right. So I should be able to pull this out. I hope. Unless it's connected. But you know what? It is connected. It is also connected on the bottom. And we got a rod. So how do we get this out? I could I could bend these, right? And pull this this way. But once you bend something like that, you have a high chance of that just breaking off. Um, when it, you don't know how brittle it is, so I, I really don't want to do that. So it looks like it looks like let me put some light on here. It looks like there is a screw in there that does hold that plate. But those are one of those things if if I get it unscrewed, how am I gonna screw it back in? Alright, I do have some other bolts up here. I got these right here. Let's uh, let's take those off. And see if it will release. Okay, All right, we, we might be on to something. We go back to this side, get out of the way. I'll take this one out. And then that one.
Okay, it looks like we're going to pull that screw out and hope for the best. We got one more challenge. All right, I didn't see this. We are also soldered. These wires coming up. Right here, this green one and the red one. So let me. Let me desolder those. We'll come back to it. Okay. Alright, we made some progress. One half of it is out. So this is it. This is uh, one half. This would be the... This would be this side. and it would sit just like that well in the box not this but in the box so we have a lot going on we've got some tuning capacitors or, or i'm not sure what these are um i'm assuming they're they're tuning resistors not capacitors um but I don't know if you can see these holes right here, right? And it's, it's, it's really interesting that these slugs right here are tied from one side to the other. And those fit in those holes. So when you're turning on the knob, it actually moves it back and forth just like that and I guess that's what dials in the um, the tuning on the TV so pretty interesting I, I will clean some of this up I will um, go ahead and remove the other side Ho I hope that these are tied into the other side, right? Now I just didn't pull this apart, but it, it it seems like it's or maybe it's held down on on this on this pad right here. But I, I would hate to move these at all, so we'll be very very careful. All right, so I'm gonna get this other side out, and then hopefully we'll just have a shell here, and we we can uh, we can go to the next next section. Okay, so let me uh, let me get it out and we'll be back. I did a little bit of inspection, right? And I think we're going to back up and do one side at a time. I was going to pull everything apart and then do this, but you know, after looking at it, it rides on on these teeth right here. Let me, let me get that in there. So, so when you turn it, right, it moves the whole thing back and forth. I'm going to clean it, but at first I thought, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grease that up or put a light film or something on there. But what I'm afraid of is there, there's a lot of um, contacts in here that are making contacts. And I don't want to put anything in here that's going to attract um, dust and we start collecting dust in here um, that could be a fire hazard down the road right because it's going to be enclosed you're not going to be able to see it you're not going to clean it and then you start getting the fuzz in there 
and uh, it's a bad situation because there are some contact points in here um, you can see these cop well let me get that in there you can see these copper plates right um, I don't there's these, I don't think these are live they could be but when you go back to when you go back to this guy this right here I'm afraid that that's, that's going to arc ever so slightly and then we're going to have a problem so I'm going to leave it dry but I am going to go ahead and pull this one apart and focus on this one and clean all the contacts on there and I wasn't sure how I was going to do it and there's some components in here but I figured out this part right here let me back up a little bit so it doesn't have such a problem focusing um, I'm going to pull this out this actually slides out so I'm just afraid that I'm going to end up breaking um, And, the, and these these contacts are very very tight there we go oh wow so we got one I'm thinking that's a capacitor in there um, See if I can actually read anything off of it, and then we have uh, one one resistor in there. No, we have two. I hope they measure just fine because I don't want to try to have to replace that. And then I'll clean some of the stuff up. You can see that you have a contact point right here. That, and also these two back here, and this right here, and it rides on this rail so we'll get that cleaned up and we'll get it we'll get it put back together and then we'll do the other side I will probably do the other side I'll probably do this one show you what it looks like and then and then go do the other side right you've seen one you've seen the other side you've seen this one you've seen the other side okay all right so let me uh let me test this real quick And uh, we'll, we'll come back to it. So after um, closer examination, I don't, I don't have a schematic and I can't, I can't tell. I think, right, I think, I'm pretty sure this is a capacitor, like a Pico something, right? But this guy, I don't know if that's just a high ohm, resistor I'm not sure what's going on with it <clears throat> and when I take my reading um, from from this guy it's completely completely off not in the same ballpark so um, and, and they're and they're they're uh, uh, parallel with each other so I don't know if that reading is supposed to be so I think I'll for now until I find a schematic I'll go ahead and clean up the, the contact points on this and uh, and get it back uh, get it back in working order and I'll, I'll show you what it looks like after after I'm done okay still a little bit wet but um, got it cleaned up uh, as best I could we'll let it dry a little bit and now it's time to start working on this guy got to clean the slide and then take a look at the contacts and try to figure out how can I get how can, sorry how can I get into those uh, contacts on there so and then once I get that I'll put it back together and check the rest of it out and then I'll set to the side start on the other one and then I'll show you all um, uh, and when that one's done I'll come back and we'll talk about about cleaning everything else up on this guy so okay exciting I'll be back okay. it's done not much to it uh, still a little bit wet um, I end up using a little bit of this uh, deoxid um, says it's a lubricant um, on the slides and everything else so 
we will see so now it it actually slides a lot better than what it used to which is always a good sign so now I'm gonna work on the other side and then we will address the I guess you would call it the carriage for it all okay I'll finish the other side and we'll come back okay so I got both sides cleaned up cleaned lubricated pretty happy with them I did go back I figured out the resistors both re all the resistors are good um, so now it's time to deal with the um, what I'm calling the carriage so as I was saying I don't want to put any grease on here but this um, deoxid is actually it's actually working pretty good you know it says it's a lubricant so maybe it'll be light enough where it doesn't attract anything um, and we'll go, we'll go from there I mean not go from there I'm going to use this to to lubricate this track but first I need to I need to clean it up and you can see where these um, barrels right they go in the um, the holes they're actually individual and they are pinned down inside so if I can turn this light on there you go so I want to make sure that uh, I put the right side on <coughs> in the barrels because they're, one side is a little bit longer than the other one I might just wipe off the the top of them but not with any cleaners and uh, and just all the moving parts um, clean off and and uh, let it put the the lubricant on there so you can see inside it has tension to hold the shaft in place let me find something to point with uh, uh, sorry about this there we go it has tension that holds the shaft in place and this provides like a, a base for it so you can see where it's wearing a little bit so I'm gonna go ahead and just lightly clean all this off and then put some some uh, deoxid on there and go from there and then start putting it back um, when I get to the top I'll have to take care of the the uh, electrolytic in the pot um, but I want to at least get this portion of it put back together because uh, I think this is the, the biggest job of there and I'll go ahead and clean everything on there um, the way these little indicators move it's all this does is move over right and push I mean this will be right yeah just like there and just just pushes it up right so pretty basic pretty ingenious so wish I had a TV to see if this thing actually works but I'll find me one and then we'll we'll try it out all right I got um, got it put back together I, I lost the screw and it took me a while to find it you know how that goes so found it got it put back together um, Seems like it works pretty okay, just the way it is. So I'm gonna set this to the side. And now I'm gonna start working on this. So again, I'm gonna pull this completely apart, remove the shaft, clean it up, because this is real tight, replace the electrical edit, clean this up, and I'll start reassembling um, the machine. And then I also have to replace this this line cord. I don't have a brown line cord, so so it'll be a, a black one for now. I don't think anybody will mind. So as I was saying, um, I don't have a, a brown line cord. I just got black ones, so that's what I'll end up replacing it with. All right, I'll get this apart. I'll go ahead and replace this guy. Uh, but when I get this apart, I'll stop and, and we'll, we'll take a look at it. 
Okay, um, came out. Now we need to take, we need to peel these back. These old tabs. All right, and get this guy off. We also need to get this retaining ring. So I get a. They got right there. And that's a little tricky. I'm going to have to do this off camera. Um, but normally I'll get something wedged in there enough where I can pull it down the other side and take it off. Or sometimes you get lucky, you can roll it up onto the shaft. And then this shaft will come straight out the back. So. And hopefully um, we'll put some grease on there, clean it up. It'll be much easier to use. Okay, got it all put back together um, for this part. Got it cleaned up. It looks like this is dirty, but it's, it's not. It's, it's a stain or oxidation. I, I didn't want to scrub too hard because I don't know if this galvanized or, or what and take off the protective coating on it. So I got everything uh, soldered back. I just need to put the top on here. And it will go something like, like that. Or maybe I got it backwards. Something like that. And then the, the cover will go on it like that. And then I need to clean up the housing. This is not going to come off. Um, maybe when I get my TV, I'll recover this. This used to be a felt pad on the bottom of it. It's long gone. So it's not its not going to be the prettiest thing um, right now, but uh, there's possibility here, right? I mean, it's not too damaged or too gone. I just need to, you, you can still find this, this uh, cover and uh, I'm going to try to clean it up and let me get it reassembled and I'll get it cleaned up and we'll we'll see how good it looked um, after I'm done. And maybe it'll look just the same. I, I don't know, but I'm going to try. All right, let me go. Uh, let me get this all set up and we'll see what I come up with. All right, so all packed together, soldered everything back in place went ahead and cleaned the case cleaned the knobs they came out came out pretty good um, did run into one issue when I was cleaning the back this guy fell out didn't even notice it until um, a few minutes ago and it's somewhere on the floor has to be I, I checked all over the, the table I'll find it but it's getting pretty late. I'm not going to find it tonight. I'll find it in the morning, put it in there, solder, solder it back together. So, for now, use your imagination. It's there. It looks great. It's badass. Right. And then tomorrow, I'll put it in there and complete it. So, I want to go ahead and start it up. Uh, plug it in. Uh, did replace the cord. Okay. Remember, so this will be on this side, and I think it only powers, um, it's only one side or the other for the light to come on. So, if I went to the other side, there we go. I think tomorrow as well. I'll go to the store and get some black um, construction paper and make new ones. I want this thing ready to go when, whenever I find that TV.
All right. So the tubes are are heating up. It's hard to tell on this side, but they're, they're starting to glow. They're getting warm. So again, I can't test it. I'm assuming it works. Um, I'm gonna put the case on, and and we will we will go from there. So let me get the case on. Let me get it set up. All the screws back in it, and. Uh, We'll see what it looks like completely done and we will call it a day. Well there we have it. It is uh, all back together and it looks great for, for what it started, right? And I'm pretty confident that it works. Right? The only way to find out is uh, find me a TV. So, hey, thanks for y'all for, for watching. Um, if you like this kind of stuff, please subscribe. Uh, give it a thumbs up. Um, leave a comment, good or bad. I, I do my best to answer any of them that come up. And I really do appreciate y'all uh, watching this kind of stuff because I get a lot of enjoyment out of it. I don't do it to make money or anything else. Um, it's just, just fun. I like to restore this this uh, vintage um, oddities and and uh, see if I can bring it back to life and uh, this was probably the oddest one I've done so far it was a lot more challenging than I ever expected and um, uh, really I uh, really enjoyed it so all right I'll see you all in the next one